you know, I don't get to just go clock in and clock out. You know, I'm always on the clock working and kids go to bed and then I'm, I'm up till midnight doing things, but it's all worth it. I get to go stop all of it and go have vacation for two weeks whenever I want with my girls. It's just, it's, it's definitely been the best lifestyle that I could have imagined for our family. Hey babes, it's Kayla Craft with the Mommy Millionaire Podcast. I'm a mom of three littles, ER nurse turned self-made millionaire and lifestyle entrepreneur. I am bringing you inspiring stories, business and mindset tips to help you be shameless in pursuing your ambitions. Hey, Mommy Millionaires, welcome to this special episode with my friend, Sonia Hatter. I am so excited to have her on because I've been secretly watching her for, I don't know, maybe a year now, maybe a couple months. I'm not sure, but ever since I saw her, I was captivated by her smile, her energy, and her love for her husband and her kids. You guys are going to absolutely adore her. So make sure to take lots of notes because she's not just a mom and a wife. She's a power house woman, and she's building an empire with her husband. So welcome Sonia to the show. Oh my gosh. Thank you. That was such a great introduction. <laughs> I know. I like, everybody's like, can you wake me up like that every morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm t- today I'm going to be so productive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So tell me a little bit about how you guys started Thrive. It was just an idea that my husband had on his honeymoon, on on our honeymoon. <laughs> we um, <laughs> we were in Rome, and um, I just said, "Hey, what would you want to do in your life? Like, if money didn't matter?" And he said, "I'd love to have an event where you know thousands of people can come, and we could teach them how to grow their business, how to make an impact in this world, and." Um, how to give back. We have the four purpose model that we like to teach people kind of like diff eyewear and Tom's shoes. When you buy a pair, you're giving a pair back. So he, he just loved that idea and he didn't know how to get it out there. And I just said, why don't we just try it? And so we came back home and he just hit the ground running and he did all that he could to get it to go. And the first event had about 400 people at it. And my husband is a great visionary, but he's not good at like executing details. So as it got closer, I just, I, we had a brand new baby. I said, Hey babe, did you uh, make like name tags and, you know, registration folders and how, you know, swag bags and where are you going to have banners? And he's like, Oh my gosh, I didn't think about any of that. I just thought about getting people there and speakers. And I said, what about flights? What about this? And so I kind of just started to help him. And then the following year, it grew even larger. And so people couldn't get a hold of him. They started messaging me on Facebook. And so I started to answer a few questions here and there. And people realized that I would give answers a lot faster than he would. So I would just have my little yellow notepad outside of his shower. He's taking a shower or he's just going to the bathroom and I would have every question and then I'd write back everyone the next day. And we just kind of became partners organically. Oh, I love that. (laughs) You picked up the slack. That's what you did. He's just a great captain. Like he has these crazy ideas and you know, he's the, he's the true entrepreneur. And I like being the first mate. I'm good at guiding him. I'm good at, you know, taking everything that he wants and making it happen and, you know, growing our team in a way so we can all make his visions come to life. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's the visionary. You're the integrator. Yeah. And it's, you got to have both because he would have a new idea every day and nothing would ever get accomplished. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yes. So that's so funny because me and my husband are the exact opposite. So I'm the visionary and he's the integrator and he's always bringing me back to reality. You know, Yeah, it's the best. That's how, you know, you make the dream work. Yes, totally. So for those of you guys listening in right now, maybe you don't have a spouse or a partner to help you, but you guys can always find that magical unicorn that can be your integrator if you're the visionary. Or if you're like, you know, like Sonia in the background and you're like thinking about all these extra details, maybe you could be somebody else's integrator. So it's kind of cool. Okay. So you guys are building this empire. Have you always been super like driven and like, you know, wanting to do big things with your life? 
Yes. So I um, was born in Serbia. So my, my husband likes to joke that I'm a mail ordered bride, but I was like, I came here when I was four, babe. You can't even use that joke. And um, <laughs> then I, I've always had two jobs, 18 units in school. I got my degree in criminal, uh, my bachelor's of science in criminal justice and a minor in psychology. And I just love like Dexter and CSI and all of that stuff. And I just, I bought a condo when I was 24. I always just worked every weekend. I bartended and I made all my money bartending. And then during the week, I would go to my regular jobs and school. And so everyone's always noticed that I just always worked hard. And I think that's because of my parents just seeing the immigrant lifestyle coming here, having nothing and just seeing my parents always working two jobs, my dad going to night school, saving every penny. And it's just, they gave me the best work ethic by watching them. And then by marrying my husband, my dad thought I had a screw loose because he's an entrepreneur and the risks that entrepreneurs take are a little bit crazier than the average person, you know, with a steady paycheck. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So was he happy when you married Cole? Or was he like, what the heck are you doing? (laughs) Yeah, they were definitely happy. They knew he had the best heart, everything that he's gone through. And, you know, hence why we created Thrive. But um, the the whole career path just made them uneasy. And how is he going to support my wife? Is my wife or my daughter? And is my daughter going to always be having two jobs? And, you know, like they they just wanted us to choose the safe route. And Mm. we did it. And you know, thank, thankfully we did take risks because everything we have now, I just, I can't even, I would have never imagined. What do they say about it now? Do they want to be entrepreneurs now? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. They still don't believe it. When they come over, they're like, how, how, how do you do this? (laughs) I said, I don't know, mom and dad. I'm like, you know, I don't get to just go clock in and clock out. You know, I'm always on the clock working and kids go to bed and then I'm, I'm up till midnight doing things, but it's all worth it. I get to go stop all of it and go have vacation for two weeks whenever I want with my girls. It's just, it's, it's definitely been the best lifestyle that I could have imagined for our family. Oh, I love that. I, I know that there's like a lot of people out there that don't get that life and they really crave just like an ordinary, like balanced life. And if you're an entrepreneur, like you just can't, like people ask me all the time, how do you have balance and be an entrepreneur? I'm like, you don't like, it's literally, it's a myth. Like, what are you talking about? (laughs) I completely agree. I tell people all the time. I'm like, there is no balance. All these people trying to say that there is no, you have to sacrifice a lot. And I see my other mommy friends, you know, that don't, that aren't entrepreneurs, you know, and I'm envious as well because they get to just clock out at the end of the day and enjoy all that time with their family. When my phone's ringing at six or seven at night, you know, my daughters are like, mommy, mommy. And so if I do have to take that call, they do see mommy working hard. So I do like that. I think that they'll grow up with the same work ethic, but I also have to figure out that, okay, if I'm interfering with the evening time, I make a point to take them to the park early in the morning or go do something fun like movies during lunchtime. So I always try to compensate for that time in a, in a different part of the day if I took away from it working. Totally. And I think you just, you can't compare yourself to the other mom friends because their picture is going to look so differently than you. And you would probably be like so bored and you would probably hate your life. So, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like sometimes I get like that too. I'm like, gosh, I wish I just had nothing to worry about except for my kids. And Mm -hmm. and I'm like, no, because like, then I have like these little kid geniuses that are playing shark tank and coming up with all these inventions. And I'm like, yes, this is why like they're so in our business and they know like they could walk in here right now while we're doing this podcast and I'm not going to tell them to leave. Like they, yes, I love that. you know, like they know they're my top priority. So I think that's like, if you're a mom listening in, that's an entrepreneur, like just make sure your kids know that you're the number, that they are the number one priority in your life and not business. For sure. And the, the mom guilt does happen. So that's okay. And I think that every mom will experience that even if they don't work. You know, if you're going to go do something, go to the store and have a minute to yourself. I just think that mom guilt is healthy to a certain degree, but always just like you said, if they walk in, my daughter could walk in as well. And she talks to our mastermind and I just, they love that they are a part of everything. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think like I had a mom that worked 12 hour days, you know, she worked as a telemarketer on the weekends and like was doing whatever it could, but 
whatever she could. She wasn't an entrepreneur, but she was just trying to make ends meet. And I never once ever questioned her love for me because she always told me like she, and I think that's what's important is like, if you speak life over to your kids all the time, they're, they're just being kids. Like they're enjoying, they might complain a little bit, but you know, they'll get over it. I don't remember any of that stuff. I just remember my mom loving me so much, you know? It's the truth. Everyone says that like the kids won't remember all that stuff, but they'll remember the good quality, like vacations and time and love that you gave them mm-hmm. and the whole acts of service, like your mom working so hard for you, you knew that. Yep. And it, like, that was ingrained with love right there. Yep. And that's why I'm like a crazy hard worker, just like you. So I love it. Okay. So let's talk about, I've been having all these people on recently that are in real estate. And I know that's what you guys talk a lot about. Are you in, like, what do you do when it comes to the real estate world that Cole's in? So I bought my first condo and I flipped it with my dad. Cole's been flipping homes for probably about 13 years. I've only done the condo that I purchased when I was 24. And then our family home that I had to take my husband to see five times, five. (laughs) And I was like, babe, I can see that this is going to be something great. And he's like, I just don't see the vision. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, you do this for a living. How can you not see that this is the house with the best bones and we're going to make this so great. And the margins are going to be fantastic. Like I'm good at looking at comps. I'll know, Hey, look at this area. Look how much these houses went for. I think this one will do really well if we chose to add a loft to it. Or if we chose, you know, there's certain things that you could do that'll just skyrocket the price of the real estate. And, um, um, I've basically only done that with my condo, our family home. And then now this one that we just moved into, I saw on Instagram and I had to make him come see this one three times. And all three of them have been so profitable. And he's like, I'm just never going to question you again, babe. <laughs> I, <laughs> so I'm just my, I'm really good at finding the, and it's not a pocket deal because I, I find them online, but I, I could see if I knock down certain walls or if I add certain things that don't, don't cost a whole lot, um, that the margins will be really good. And so he, um, he trusts me on that. He handles all the, you know, the contractors and what needs to be done. Him and his dad do all of the flips and they'll just say, Hey, do you like this wallpaper? Do you like this backsplash and come see the shower? And they always just want to get my feedback mostly on like kitchens and bathrooms since, you know, closets, what women really like. So I'll go help with that stuff, but that's about it. How did you get good at that? Um, it just, I, I don't even know. I'm just really good at Excel spreadsheets. I love to look at numbers. So I will have certain areas and everything I do on Excel, like on an Excel spreadsheet, it'll say square footage. It'll say, you know, the areas, you know, and I have all of them showing where each house is. And I, I, I don't even know my husband just, he's like, how do you just find these homes? And I just do, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they're far and few between. Obviously if someone wants to make this a lifestyle, three houses in like 10 years wouldn't do it. So my husband does like three a year, if not more. So just the ones that I've done have been really lucrative. Oh my gosh. I love it. So Yeah. And I've heard that like, cause we're, we're in real estate, but like I'm, I'm getting like even more cause I want to do a part. I want to flip apartment complexes. That's like my, my new thing I want to do, but, um, it's really hard to find a deal. Like it's really hard to see, okay, like this is going to be profitable or this is just going to like, I'm going to lose a ton of money here. Um, and I've, that's been like really interesting to me. Cause I thought the hardest part was going to be coming up with the money for the deals. And I'm like, that was the easiest part now. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? we'll send it all away. We'll look at it. I'd love to like help you. And like my husband, he, he really enjoys it. So if you ever need any help and I'll even come like walk through with it, like with you go through the house. Like I, this is, I, I think it's you exciting. Can, you could fly to Texas with me. That's where I'm looking. Yeah, that's where my family lives. It's it's really nice to flip in different areas because they're so cheap. I like I did a, a wholesale um, in Ohio. Never went in it. Never saw it. And um, I I tripled what I made. Oh so, my gosh, that's amazing. That was just a wholesale. Granted, you could buy. I bought the house for five thousand dollars. You know, and it was a house. So okay, so just- let's talk about that because people listening in right now, they're like, what is she talking about? Like, it's like a foreign language. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's crazy because we live, I live in Orange County. That's the cost of like my window downstairs. You know, like, 
it's, it's unbelievable what you can find in different areas of the world. I have friends that only will flip in Detroit and they live in Northern California. So it's like, they don't even have to go see properties. You have, you know, there's like, it's called a bird dog and he'll go and he'll like find all like properties for you. He'll send you pictures and then you look at comps and you can decide and you don't even have to go. Um, if you're doing an apartment, of course you'd want to go see that. Cause that's just a, a bigger deal. So, but there's real estate is fun. Um, I think that a lot of people get burned by it. Um, and then don't try it again. We've lost lots of money in real estate. And then we've also made a lot. So it's, it's hit or miss, you know, you won't know that there's a crack in the foundation and you got to tear a whole part down or that there's black mold until later. And then you have to rip all that out and then there's extra costs, but hopefully you can, um, over time, give yourself a bigger budget. No. Okay. That's how everything lines up. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about that because I think that is a big reason why people are scared to invest in real estate is because of the risk. Um, even though I think it's like one of the lowest risks compared to a lot of other things that we invest in. And how do you recover from those things? Cause I know we just, we just found out two days ago, we invested in an oil rig. We put like a hundred thousand dollars into an oil rig and it was supposed to be like, we were supposed to make a million dollars off of it. Cause they were like, Oh, all the tests have come back clean and this is going to happen. You know, blah, 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 blah. Like we knew we were taking a risk, but we just found out that it's water. Like it's, we have nothing. We just basically, you know, circulated a hundred thousand dollars out there and yeah, we're not getting anything back. But you know, for me, it's just like, whatever it's, you know, we learned a lesson and we knew that kind of going into it. So. Amen. That's, that's all it is. Like I, I don't know how, I, I think that I've basically learned that when I make a decision to not get so emotionally attached to everything, yeah. like I just listen to my gut in the first place, yes or no. And you know, sometimes I might be wrong and it's not even just like with real estate, it's like with other business opportunities that we've had. And, you know, I've learned to take that, the rejection, or I've learned to take that loss and it's kind of as a fuel to work even harder to get that money back that I lost and gain even more. Ooh, I love the way that you put that. Yes. Just use mm-hmm. it as fuel. Use it as fuel. How do you not take things personally? Because I think a lot of women, like they take everything personally. I still do, but I try to kind of step back and I have like my husband who is really logical. He'll sit down and say, you know, babe, this wasn't, this isn't, does does not mean that you're dumb because you didn't do a good job or you chose the wrong numbers. This just means that this wasn't the right area or this wasn't the right business partner. Like he could break it down for me. So I think that if someone has um, a really good, close best friend or has a significant other or, you know, a great partner that can sit down and audit me and, and break it down for me, like, this wasn't you, like you were so smart. And then I can step back from it. And I'm like, yes, because my husband and I have to do that. We audit our business every single week, but we also have to audit our relationships where he's like, babe, I really need some more time with you. I feel like disconnected. Can I take you to the movies today? I'm like, yes, done. And I think that being able to audit a relationship the same way when something falls apart, when you're sad, you audit it and you figure it out. Then it just, it just brings you back. Okay. When you say audit, are there like certain questions you ask or? It's always different. It's kind of like, you know, a business is like, what's your ROI, your return on investment? You know, what is, um, how's the staff, like how are our numbers looking and what do we need to do to move forward for next week? We don't look at numbers, but I'll look at how much quality time did we spend together this week with the kids, with us, by ourselves. Um, what do we do? We need to do in the following week to make sure that we can make this the best week. Also, you know, do we need to plan out a trip because we've been on the grind? We just had Thrive, and we were so busy for a month. So now we're going to go head to Europe. We're going to do a cruise so that we're with the kids nonstop for two weeks. So we we audit differently from a business. However, it is really it is almost the same questions. And I think what it sounds like is it's, those are your core values, like quality time. I don't, I don't know what else, but I'm sure it just all goes back to the core values. Totally. It's it's the the quality time is just essential for, for everything because 
you know, my, my, my husband is a words of affirmation person, or he's actually physical touch and quality time. Those are his two main ones and mine's acts of service. So we always just make sure that we're giving each other those loves that we need, but quality time just boils down to everybody. So it's like, if we can figure out how to get that quality time in for the business, for us, we're, we're on cloud nine. Oh, I love that. I love it. Okay. So you have Thrive Ladies Academy coming up. Tell me yes. a little bit about that. Well, I have the wonderful Kayla Craft coming, so I don't <laughs> know anything else. But <laughs> yes, um, Thrive Ladies Academy, it's just been requested after the five years that we've been doing big thrives, make money matter. It's been, you know, the first year was major- majority were men. And then a lot of people saw that Cole and I, my husband, um, how we run the business together and how he spends a lot of time with me. And we kind of attracted other men that would come to Thrive that really enjoyed their significant other as well. And they either worked with them or they didn't, or they wanted them to just join them in the space of learning business and personal development. And so every year there's been more and more women until I just couldn't believe it this year when I looked out in the crowd and so many men that I've seen first year, second year had their wives this year. And the they didn't understand everything that their husbands were saying about Thrive until they were there. And they just said, you know, I love this community. This is so great, but I, I want more. And I'm like, I don't know how to give you more. Like this is one time a year and, you know, we do have the mastermind, but this is, this is like, it's a one-time event. And all of them said, you know, we love how you have this for men and women. Can you do something for just women? And I've always been scared to step out and just do something like this. My husband's believed in me from the very first thrive that I should do it. It just wasn't ready. And so I just decided what years, you know, I might as well just do it this year. All these women are asking for it and I'm teaching people how to be more confident. And the only way that I can become more confident is if I consistently put myself in these positions and just keep growing. And so the first ladies thrive is born and it is on seven, seven on a yacht. I didn't want to do it in a ballroom. I thought a ballroom would be just normal, you know, and I wanted to just launch out there and have it just being a unique experience where women are just going to learn business tactics and make friendships and just leave with great memories. Oh my gosh. I love it. I can't wait to be on the yacht. It's going to be so much fun. So much fun. And you have a bunch of amazing speakers out there. And I'm I'm super proud of you for doing this because I've been watching you and you're like, I'm kind of scared to speak or whatever. And then you get on stage in front of thousands of people and rock it. And there's a lot of people that are going to see that and see you do this academy and then are going to follow their dreams. So thank you for doing that and not listening to, you know, the maybe the negative talk in your head that could possibly hold you back. Oh, for sure, girl. Oh my gosh. Thank you. That that means so much. Yeah. Like I, every year, every morning I hear that curse, that fear talking to me and I just have to just do what I've been teaching myself for the past two years. You know, I did a fitness competition. I did a beauty pageant. I, I know on- Miss Orange County. Yeah. I just fight by, by trying to just tell myself, you know, 99.9% of fear is based on memory. And I just visualize myself nonstop. I used to think that was the silliest thing to to visualize yourself doing, you know, standing on a stage. How's that going to help me in any way? But it's crazy what the mind does. And it, I reprogrammed my brain and it's, I would have pictures of me standing on a stage all throughout the house, me in a (laughs) bikini on a stage around the house, me on, um, with a crown on a beauty pageant stage. And I'd see that every day and you start to believe it and it's crazy. So when people keep telling themselves all these negative things, it really messes with your mind and it will happen. I have turned into this woman that I've always wanted to be. And I I didn't realize I saw Tony Robbins before he went on stage for his documentary, which is on Netflix. And he does the same thing. Like he keeps telling himself that he's a, he's the best because he goes out there for an hour run and he just jogs and he repeats that in his head over and over and over until he really believes it. And then he goes out on stage and he is just pumped and it's 
crazy how well that works. And, you know, I've just consistently been doing that. And every time I get nervous about this Thrive Ladies Academy, I just keep saying that in my head. I, I do my little pump up jog and dance and then I'm, I'm good to go and I'm back. Oh my gosh. I love it. I think everything is so simple that we need to do in order to become like the highest version of who we are. And a lot of people resist that because it's like, they think it's like rocket science. Like, no, it has to be more difficult than that. And you're like, no, all you have to do is say it out loud and see it in your head. Like legit, that's all you need to do. And people just go to work to complicate it. But that is seriously all, that's the secret to success. Like is believing you already are a success and and then you become it. So- And I like, it's, that's so true. Like, it's so easy the way you just said it, but I don't know why we can't do it. And my, my three-year-old and my six-year-old, they honestly believe they're unstoppable with everything. Like I tell my daughters every single day that they're, they are extraordinary and they are fearless. They are hatters and they never give up and they say it over and over. And we were at a jump park, uh, like a bounce place. And my oldest daughter, she's like trying to run up this large um, spot where all these teenagers are trying to get up this American gladiator wall. And she's physically too small. And I see her struggling and I see her stand up at the top and she's like, mommy, I'm extraordinary and I'm fearless. I'm a hatter. I never give up. I'm going to make it up that wall. And I felt so bad for her because I was like, okay, she physically cannot do this. Like, how am I going to tell her and crush her right now? And I was like, I'm trying to figure out the right words. And all of a sudden I see her sprint up this wall. She latches on like a spider monkey on this fence. I didn't even acknowledge that fence because I just see this huge wall and I'm like, my poor daughter, she's not going to make it. She like latched on like a monkey, climbed that fence and then was at the top with all the other teenagers. And she's like, see, I told you I'm a hatter. I never give up. And I just started to cry. And I'm like, this little girl believes in herself so much because mommy and daddy tell her every single day that she found a different way to make it work. And I would have never seen that because I'm just black and white. And she's just like, nope. I'm unstoppable. I'm going to do it. Oh my gosh. That just gave me chills. I love that. I love that. And well, I think like I just talked about this in like my millionaire S society group the other day, because, um, when kids are under seven years old, like they're in a different, they live in a different brainwave than us. Like they can't filter out some of the things. So if you would have told her, you can't do that, she would literally take it seriously. Like I can't do anything like that's what they would take. And so that starts to become her subconscious mind before she's even seven years old. And a lot of us, we tell our kids, no, we tell our kids, oh no, you can't do that. We're, you know, we're a hatter. We, we don't jump. We can't climb. You know, you could have said something like that. Like, oh, we don't have any height in us. Like, you know, something that I remember, like I've talked to so much, so many, you know, women now that it all goes back to when they were under seven years of age, when they stopped believing in themselves. So kudos to you for speaking life into your kids. And for those of you guys listening in right now, it's not too late. If your kids are older, like you can start speaking to them differently. I know like for me with Cooper, I didn't realize that. And he's a, he's a competitive like hockey player and he is like, he's really, really good, but there's a couple things he has to work on and he's nine. And I didn't realize like, because he's been playing since he was four, that there are some things that he's heard from his dad saying like, you know, oh, like you're not very fast. And so like you become that, like, even though you're, you're not doing it as a malicious parent, you're just going, oh, you know, you're not very fast. We have to make it up here. And so that's literally become what his problem is. And now like I have him in the mirror every single morning, morning saying I am fast. I am aggressive. And I have him do it for 20 minutes. Like, and he'll be like, mom, why? I'm like, no, cause I'm hypnotizing you. I'm getting, I'm brainwashing you into believing that you're fast and aggressive. And he doesn't get it yet, but I'm like, I'm changing it. I'm reversing this problem because your subconscious mind is not going to hold you back. I love that. That's so amazing. Yeah. You're reframing it. And it's like you said, it doesn't matter if they're over seven. I mean, I started doing this when I was 32. Like if you would talk to me two years ago, you would think I, I would literally be like freaking out all morning to do a podcast. Like right now with you, I would have probably been crying downstairs telling my husband, oh my gosh, I have a podcast. Like, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? And 
by reframing it and telling myself over and over. And I have like little things posted on my mirror in my room that just says like, I am beautiful and I am this and I am that. And it, I truly believe it. And I could come on here with you, what, five minutes before? And I'm like, hey girl, and and it's, we're just talking. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. So do you, what kind of coaches do you have right now that you're working with? So I have, they're not basically, it's, it's, masterminds. I just really love being in different groups. I don't have necessarily a mentor at all. I always have mentors, but not someone that I really call. Um, I just have different women that I will have, that I just, I'll talk to and I'll see what they do. And just being with like-minded people when I say, Hey, I'm, I'm choosing to do this. What do you think? And they'll break it down for me. I just love having so many different opinions of women in the same spot as me. So I can use that. And then I also have, you know, my friends in different areas of my life that's, that don't understand this space and look at it from an outsider's view. And I just love putting both of them together, almost like my Excel spreadsheet. And I'll just see everything all on one spot. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to move forward this. I'm not going to do this. And that's just helping me. Oh, I love that. Okay. So That's a bringing me to my next question of how did you make so many great connections? I mean, you are like the master of connecting with anybody you want. I feel like. (laughs) Yeah. I don't even know. It just evolved from Instagram, man. If there's someone that I want to speak to, I, I, I just, I'll figure it out. I will you know, DM them on Instagram. If they don't answer, I'll find their site. You know, then there's like a salesperson that I can talk to, to get to the gatekeeper, to get to the main person. Like I've been trying to get a hold of Dwayne Johnson, the rock, you know, and Will Smith. And what I do is they'll post something. And I, you know, I got in contact with a yoga instructor that they posted in Australia that gave me a contact to get to here to there. It's basically, you just become a stalker. (laughs) In other words, you just stalk people. And then you, it's, you can find certain things that they like. For example, you know, Lisa Bill, you cracks up that I am, that we're friends because I, I told her I stalked you. I found, I saw you online. I thought you were incredible. I look up to everything you do. And I, I needed you to notice me in this proud of this crazy world. And you can't do that by not trying to talk to them. And there's always so many people you have to get through. And once I finally did, you know, I, I love to give gifts. It's my favorite thing. And it's not even, it it needs to be something expensive. I know that she loves Wonder Woman and I love Wonder Woman. And I saw these really cool um, makeup brushes and they're Wonder Woman brushes. And so I just, I got the address and I sent it to her and she was just completely just dumbfounded how thoughtful the gift was. And it was just makeup brushes, but I stood out to her. You know, Sarah Blakely is probably one of the moms that I respect so much. And she's built a billion dollar company with Spanx and she makes pancakes every morning with her kids on Sunday. And it's like, I just love everything she does. And she taught me something really valuable was um, when she wanted to get to know somebody, she would find out where the location was and she would send a shoe and person would open up a shoe box and there's only one. And then there would be a note inside that said, I just wanted to get my foot in the door. So like little things like that have been able to help you stand out. And then once you meet that person, and if there's a connection, then usually you get to connect with someone new. Like I saw you, I believe from Lori Harder. I'm not even sure. Or Lexi Panos, my other friends, like I went to, I, I don't know where I found you, but I started following you and love everything you do. And it's just, the network has just gotten larger and larger. I I love it. I love it. I think that like what I'm learning from you and just you saying that is you have to be persistent in, in doing it and you can't take things personally. And if you really want it, you have to go in with not um, making it about you, but really like you're making it about them. Like, you know, that like, if Lisa Bill use in your life, her life is actually going to be better um, because you're going to introduce her to a whole nother audience, you know, that maybe would never know who she is. Yep. That's like, people don't realize that they're also bringing in value. I don't always, I don't ask people for things. I give them so much value in the beginning and, you know, maybe I never even have to ask for anything. It's just people need to realize that they're coming to the table with something as well. And Scooter Braun, my favorite thing that he always said was before you Scooter Braun with, 
Justin Bieber, he, you know, was on calls all day long, trying to call people and wondering why people won't pick up. And he realized that every person that he wanted to talk to, they poop too. (laughs) Okay. Elaborate. And he's just like, you know, you don't have to put these people on a pedestal thinking that they're almighty and great. They're doing the same thing you're doing. They're working, they're trying to figure life out. Like, don't think that everyone is better than you. You are just as amazing. You poop, they poop. And I'm like, well, I'm done. You're right. And that's how I just go into everything. If someone says that they, you know, don't want to connect with me or don't want to come to my event or don't want to do this and that, I'm not going to take it personal. I just think, man, you're, you're missing out at this point. It's not just me asking you. It's, it's vice versa. My gosh. I love it. I love it. And I think a lot of you guys listening in right now, you're in network marketing and you could totally take what she just said and live that out in your life that don't put anybody on a pedestal. Not one person is just going to come in and change your business. Uh, you know, so I think that's so important. Okay. So I want to talk to you about one more thing. Okay. One more thing. And when you're, okay, you're on online, Oh my gosh. I can't talk. You're on online. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, no. <laughs> what's she going to ask? What did I do before that? She knows. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> oh my gosh. No, what I was going to say is that, you know, you're on Instagram and, um, you're, you're showing your whole life. You're really good about just like showing everything and you show the messy parts. You show the awesome parts. How, how do you get okay with not having like a private life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, that's like such a good question. So my, my friend, Teddy Mellencamp, she's on TV and she had the best thing that she said to me. I I tried out for Orange County Housewives. I didn't want to, because I didn't want to be in the public eye. I don't need my personal life out there. And I made it to the finals and I was so scared. And my husband and I were like, okay, we need to discuss if if I do get this, do I want this all out there? And Teddy Mellencamp said, you know, she was getting death threats from being on Beverly Hills housewives, like literally death threats because she got in a fight with another housewife. And I'm like, that's nuts. Like, how do you deal with that? Like, I I just can't even imagine. And she said, you know, there's going to be a lot of negative things that come this come my way. I'll probably get, you know, thousands and thousands of people hating on me, but I'm going to have hundreds of thousands of women that I've helped in the end. And that's just like how I look at it. Like me putting my, you know, I just left a poopy diaper in the back of the car and left it out in hundred degree weather for about eight hours and then got the kids in the car and we all almost threw up before we got in, you know, that's a massive mom fail. And you know, it's like, you don't want to post that on social media because it's like, that's embarrassing. How did I do that? But by me posting that, I have other moms that are like, oh, I do that too. I can't believe you do that. I'm like, yes, I do everything the same as you. Like, don't think that I have my mommy life all put together. Don't think that I have my life as a wife put together. My husband and I sometimes can't stand each other and I don't talk to him for a few days. You know, it's not always rainbows and unicorns, but like we do figure it out. And so I want people to see the good and the bad to understand that I'm going through it and I make it out. So, so can you. Oh my gosh. I love that. I love that. Okay. So what happened with housewives? Did you get on? Um, no, I, I was too nice, <laughs> but they asked, like, they, they're all, you know, we'll, we'll talk to you again about next year. And I'm like, okay. But you know, I'm like, it's in God's hands. If the, the door does not open, it's there for a reason. I think it was there to protect me. And, you know, maybe next year they ask again and the door opens and then it happens or it doesn't. But I've just learned that there's times when the door closes that, you know, you can do all you can to try and open it and it just won't happen. And it's, it's let it be. I mean, it's not the same as like, if I failed at something to get back up again, it's, I can tell the difference when it's like, you know, I, we heavily prayed about if this was a good decision for us and I never had that good feeling. And I don't know if it was just because what I've seen on the show or what it was, but I just, my gut. And it's like, you've heard how, your gut is like your second brain. So I just, I went with it and we just said, okay, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And it closed. So that was absolutely. That. That's kind of how I look at all the opportunities that come my way too. I'm like, if, if God wants it to happen, it's going to be open door after open door. Like 
it's not going to be me kicking anything down. So yeah, and I'm screaming and saying, babe, I'm not doing a ladies Academy. I'm not speaking on stage. I'm not doing this. I'm not going out and doing podcasts. And the doors just kept opening and opening. I was like, okay, I get it. Let's start making this happen. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. Well, I am so excited to speak at Thrive Ladies Academy. It's on my birthday. And, um, so those of you guys that are listening in right now, I know there's a ton of you guys in orange County specifically, and it's only a day event. So if you're in California at all or in Arizona, like it's an easy drive. So head on over or, I mean, fly in for the day, who cares? Um, make it happen because it's going to be one of those life changing events. Um, and I feel like I'm excited about it because it's not overwhelming. Like it's not too long for some people where they've never been to an event like this before. You know, so I, I love the way that you set it up. So where can people find you? They can find me at Sonia Hatter and um, just that Sonia, S-A-N-J-A, looks like Sanja. So it's, um, and my last name's Hatter, H-A-T-T-E-R. Some people are like, are you Sanja Hater?" I'm like, no, it's Sonia Hatter. <laughs> <laughs> or if they'd like to hear more about the ladies event, it's thriveladies.com. And also wanted to give you 10% off if you guys um, type in the promo code mommy. Ooh, thank you for doing that. That's so sweet. Okay. So uh, we'll link all of those links up to the show notes, you guys. Plus we'll show you guys Sonia's Instagram account. She is hilarious to watch on there. So you have to follow along. If you guys loved this episode, because I'm sure you will, make sure to take a screenshot of it and tag both me and Sonia so we can repost it in our stories and tell us what you learned. Tell us what stood out to you about Sonia because that's how you put good energy out there, you guys. You guys want to hear good words of affirmation about yourself. You got to give it to other people. So tell Sonia what you loved about her. Post it all over your social. And I just appreciate every single one of you guys that do that all the time. I want to remind you that if you haven't left a review for the podcast, I give away a free pair of Lorna Jane pants every single week to the review of the week. So make sure to do that because this podcast is completely free because I hate listening to commercials and I don't want to do that to you guys. So the way that I keep it free is by knowing that you guys love it and you guys showing the love by uh, leaving a review. So With that, you guys, thank you, Sonia, for being on the show. You were absolutely amazing, incredible, and just lit me up for today. I'm excited to go look at some deals, look at some margins, and all that good stuff you talked about. (laughs) I love it. I'm going to go leave a review. (laughs) (laughs) Until next time, ladies, go out there and get what you want. Thank you for listening to the Mommy Millionaire Podcast. For free resources and materials, head over to mommymillionaire.co. Make sure to follow Mommy Millionaire on Spotify and subscribe on iTunes. And it would mean the world to me if you left a five-star review of the show. And as always, ladies, go out there and get what you want.